The old seafarer saying goes, below 40 degrees latitude there is no law, below 50 degrees, there is no God. Cape Horn is located at 56 degrees south latitude, even further below. Its reputation is such that it's hard to imagine worse. Today, you'll learn where the most powerful ocean currents are located, why sailors were honored to wear an earring in their left ear, and how a private company could stand against entire states. Before we begin, subscribe to our channel and give a like to promote our content, as we strive to create interesting and useful content for you. Cape Horn, located on the island of the same name, is the southernmost point of the Tierra del Fuego archipelago. It's over 800 kilometers from Antarctica. It's often mistakenly called the southern point of the South American continent. But that's not entirely true. The actual southernmost point is Cape Froward, while Cape Horn is indeed on an island. Such places on the planet are aptly described as at the edge of the world. Here, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans meet, creating a unique but very treacherous climate for sailors. The weather on the island is mostly windy and cloudy, with hardly any sun, and over 280 rainy days per year. The air temperature ranges from minus 2 to plus 14 degrees Celsius. The average wind speed is 43 meters per second. To put it in perspective, even the average wind speed on the island falls into the first category of the Simpson scale for hurricanes. Hence, many consider the climate around Cape Horn to be the worst on Earth. Yet, people once inhabited such harsh places permanently. Since ancient times, the area between Cape Horn and the Beagle Channel was the domain of the indigenous Yagan people. Its last pure-blooded representative, Christina Calderon, passed away in February 2022, taking with her a unique language. The Yagan traveled in canoes, hunted marine mammals, and fished. Gradually, the population dwindled, with colonizers playing a major role in this decline. Today, there are just over 1,000 mestizos left, who have completely lost their culture and language. Nowadays, the Chilean Navy has a base on Horn Island, with a lighthouse, chapel, residential, and ancillary buildings. Typically, an officer is stationed there, accompanied by his family. Such assignments usually last for a year, during which the family spends most of their time in isolation. For sailors, it's a great opportunity to spend time with their loved ones, and a family journey to the edge of the world is a memorable experience for a lifetime. The island's inhabitants reside in a house equipped with everything for comfortable living, including internet access. The officer maintains the lighthouse and weather stations, stamps passports, and communicates with passing ships. He also bears responsibility for a small museum, where travelers leave their flags. The island's second most important landmark after the museum is a monument in the shape of an albatross. It was erected in 1992 and is dedicated to all sailors who perished in this area. The first sailors to conquer Cape Horn were two Dutchmen, Jacob Lemaire and Willem Scouten, in 1616. The Cape was named after the city of Horn in the Netherlands, whose residents sponsored the voyage. Cape Horn is bathed by the waters of the Drake Passage. It's an intercontinental passage, over 600 miles wide. It's the widest of the named passages on Earth and also the deepest, reaching up to 3,400 meters. The passage got its name at the dawn of the 20th century during the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition. Anglo-Irish Arctic explorer Ernest Henry Shackleton decided to name it after the legendary navigator Francis Drake. It was previously believed that he passed through the strait in 1578, but modern sources refute this information. As with Cape Horn, the honor of the first passage most likely belongs to members of Scouten's expedition. The Drake Passage earned a bad reputation for several reasons. Firstly, storms often occur here, and they are considered some of the most powerful on the planet. Waves up to 15 meters high are quite common. Secondly, a significant problem is caused by the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, the most powerful in the ocean and the only one on Earth that crosses all meridians. This current encounters no obstacles in the form of continents or large islands and reaches maximum speeds in the Drake Passage of 9 miles per hour. If a ship is traveling from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, it faces much greater difficulty due to the headwind. Thirdly, from April to November, the southern part of the passage is covered in ice, so icebergs and ice flows are often encountered in the summer. But why risk and circumvent Cape Horn if, at that time, Magellan had already discovered a safer passage? The thing is, Europeans were very interested in the Moluccan Islands, which were called the Spice Islands. And spices were highly valued at that time. Yes, they could be reached through the Strait of Magellan or around the Cape of Good Hope. However, the first route was considered a Spanish monopoly, and the second a Portuguese one. Later, from 1602, these routes were monopolized by the Dutch East India Company, the most influential private company of that time. By 1669, they had 40 warships, 150 commercial vessels, 50,000 employees, and an army of 10,000 soldiers. 
The company participated in political disputes alongside states. For example, in 1641, it independently, without the help of the Dutch state, ousted its competitors, the Portuguese, from what is now Indonesia. In general, it turned out that for independent traders without serious military support, wanting to travel from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific or vice versa, there was only one way. Therefore, desperate sailors ventured through the Drake Passage, circumventing Cape Horn, despite serious risks of losing their lives. Sailing on sailing ships around Cape Horn reached its peak from 1850 to 1914. This was the heyday of maritime trade. Australian goods went to England. Clippers laden with tea sailed to Europe from India, and gold seekers from the eastern coast of the United States were transported to California. This period marked the highest number of casualties. In total, around Cape Horn, not less than 800 ships met their demise, and more than 10,000 sailors lost their lives. The lives of sailors significantly improved only in 1914. Then the passage lost its former significance, as the construction of one of the largest and most complex projects of mankind, the Panama Canal, was completed, connecting the Panama Bay of the Pacific Ocean with the Caribbean Sea in the Atlantic Ocean. Thanks to the Panama Canal, it was no longer necessary to circumvent South America, and the journey was shortened by thousands of miles, which had an invaluable impact on the development of shipping and the economy worldwide. Nowadays, bypassing Cape Horn and passing through the Drake Passage is an attraction for tourists seeking strong emotions and a serious challenge for travelers who love maritime extreme adventures. Modern expedition ships are equipped with stabilizers, thanks to which the rocking motion during passage through the Drake Passage is not very severe. Despite modern technologies, this route remains dangerous. For example, in 2010, in the middle of the Drake Passage, the liner Clelia II encountered a severe storm and its engine failed. Fortunately, the liner was rescued, and it reached the Argentine port of Ushuaia without any human casualties. Nevertheless, stories like this one prove that we can consider ourselves the masters of nature all we want, but in some cases, it can still bring significant troubles. Apart from excursion cruise liners, sailors are the only ones creating a semblance of regular traffic around Cape Horn in our time. Such voyages occur as part of competitions or circumnavigations. For a sailor, overcoming the Drake Passage is comparable to conquering Everest for mountaineers. It's no wonder that sailors who rounded Cape Horn were once believed to have earned the right to wear an earring in the shape of a ring in their left ear, which was a special symbol of bravery. Despite the harshness of the Drake Passage to humans, it has managed to become home to many animals. Travelers deciding to cross it have every chance of encountering the hourglass dolphin and humpback whale, the giant petrel and wandering albatross. And on Cape Horn Island, there are penguins, seals, and sea lions. In 2005, the Cabo de Hornos National Park, including Cape Horn Island, was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That's all, folks. Share the video, leave comments, and be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed it. See you soon.